Hey, Eran Stern here to show you everything you need to know about the new properties panel in After Effects. So the properties panel is now part of the official After Effects release. Now I'm using the beta version to demonstrate it, but it should look and behave the same way in the released version. For the most part, I think it is self-explanatory, but there are a few things worth calling out, as well as one obscure feature that I'll show you at the end of the tutorial, so make sure to stick until the end. So I will use this lower third animation that I've prepared for a cooking reality show, which consists of few shape and text layers, and there's also a video background over here that I set as a guide layer just to give us some context. All right, I'll pause the playback and I'll move my current time indicator over here to four seconds and I'll select the logo layer. In the properties panel, I can now see the layer transform. And this means that I can start animating stuff without opening anything in the timeline. And not only that, if I'll click on position, for example, it will create a keyframe as well as expose this value, this property here in the timeline. So this makes it super easy to add keyframes for the things that you need. Then I'll move, let's say to six seconds. I'll change the rotation. I'll change the position. I can also change the scale and I can see those keyframes over here and I continue to modify them. Now I'm going to undo a few steps until I don't have any keyframes left. And then I will collapse this layer because the good part is over here in the layer contents. Notice that we have access to all the individual paths and shapes that are part of this logo layer. So for example, if I'll click on the hot pot, it will select the layer over here. And by the way, on my machine, I've switched off the layer controls visibility. So this means that we're not going to see the layer bounds this is just so it will be easier for me to show you everything over here in the composition panel. I'm also going to hold down Option Alt on Windows and using my mouse scroller, I will zoom into this area and then I'll turn off again the layer visibility. So now we are selecting this layer and we can of course control the color as well as see all the individual keyframes which are part of this layer. So if I'll click on go to previous keyframe, the properties panel is going to move my cursor to this keyframe as well as isolate it so I can see it here in the timeline. And if I need, I can make amendments. So I'll return back to the properties panel. I'll select the flame layer. I can show you that I can click on the field color. In this case, this is a linear gradient. And if I want, I can modify the gradient without again opening anything in the timeline. This is so much faster and so much easier to control. All right, I'll cancel out of this. And I also want to show you that we can see the text properties. So I'll close the logo layer. I'll select the title over here and move forward so we can see the title. We have access to everything in the character panel as well as in the paragraph panel, including some more options. So if you need to see the entire thing, just click on the word more or hide it if you don't need access to all the nitty gritty stuff. So it's obvious that I can change the font, the weight, as well as the size. But the less obvious part is that I can also add animators. So for example, I'm going to go to two seconds over here and I'll click on the add animator option. This is going to show me the list of options that I can choose from. I'll select opacity in this case. Again, it's going to open it over here in the timeline. I'll set the opacity to zero. I'll open up the range selector, create a keyframe for the start, and then let's move 10 frames forward by pressing shift page down and change this value to 100%. And just like that, I've managed to create this typewriter style animation without fiddling too much in the timeline. Let's do another one just to show you how easy it is. So I'll go to 210, then I'll select the next text, which I've named role. And automatically it is going to populate over here in the properties panel. I'll click on add animator. This time I'll go with position and I'm going to scrub only the Y position. So this text is going to go outside of the frame because it is matted using another layer in the timeline. 
And now I'll open up the range selector. I'll twirl down the advanced settings, change the shape from square to ramp up, and then I'll animate using the offset. So I'll take this value all the way to the left to negative 100%, click to create a keyframe, and then move forward 10 frames as before by pressing shift page down and take it all the way to 100%. I'll close everything here in the timeline, go to the beginning and preview the result. And you can see how this works and it was faster than usual to create it. All right, but this is only getting better thanks to the fact that the properties panel is also supporting essential properties. So ahead of time, what I did, I'm just going to show you, I'll go to the window menu and select the essential graphics panel. And for this composition, I took some of the properties and placed them in the essential graphics. So I drag the title, the color of it, same for the role, as well as added the CC toner effect over here and drag those properties, the highlight, midtones, and shadows to the essential graphics panel. And last but not least, I also have an expression which is driving the background over here. This is what's causing it to rotate. So all of these properties can also be accessed from the properties panel. And we don't even need to see the essential graphics panel on screen. So I'll close this one and then I'll return to the project panel. I'll double click on this composition, the sorted asparagus, and then I'll drag the cooking show on top of this comp to get access to the same template. But now I will modify everything from the properties panel. So to do it, all you need to do is select the layer and you will see the essential properties over here. And just to show you, there are also over here in the timeline, but to change the name here, you actually needed to right click and then go to edit value. So this is almost like a secret handshake. Instead, you don't even need to open this. All you need to do is just locate the value that you want to change. In this case, the name of this guy. And I'm going to paste another name over here. I'll go to the title role and I'm also going to paste another string of text that I have in the clipboard. And of course, we can also modify the colors because those values were defined inside the essential graphics panel. So I'll take the eyedropper and I'll sample, let's say, this color for the text over here. And I'm also going to change the colors of the logo. So let's go with a bright green for the highlight. And then for the midtones, I'm going to sample more or less the same color as I just used for the main title. And last but not least, I'll change the shadow color. And I'm also going to make the rotation of this backplate rotate a bit faster by changing this value to 20. And from the beginning, if I'll preview this comp, you can get a sense of how this looks. Now, as I told you, there is one more thing that I like to show you. So I'll pause the playback and I'll open up this composition that I've named Duck Rock. So this is a replica of the iconic boombox from the famous Duck Rock album by Malcolm McLaren, featured in Beyond the Streets London exhibition at the Saatchi Gallery. Highly recommended. And I would like to draw your attention to the text that I have over here. And I want to change some of the attributes. Now I'm going to open the more option for the power graph. And over here, we can change it from point text to a box text, which was again, a possibility in After Effects, but you needed to know how to do it. This is now just a simple button. I'm going to click on it, and then I'm going to set the text to justify full, and maybe also change the kerning to optical, so we'll get a nicer arrangement of text on screen. And then I'll maximize this panel and preview this composition. So this is the new properties panel in After Effects. I hope that Adobe will add more options to it. For example, I would love to have the align options over here as well. But all in all, this is a great feature that looks familiar for both novice and pro users, and I'm sure it will be improved in the future.
I hope this video was useful for you and if so, please like and subscribe and I will see you again in the next one.